probably not. Okay. Unless you're a fan of that particular artist. I didn't care. Right. I just took anything. No. Yeah. Man, that's, that's, okay. that's what we were doing. Did you make that beat? For no yeah. Good, no yeah. good unless they love you? I've been, actually I've produced everything I've ever done, uh, Shake the Joint included, except Shake the Joint was recreated because it was under a new it was under Debonair Records. So he wanted to redo it so that he would own the masters. Yeah, but what happened with um, Zeus? I heard he helped you produce that too. Well, well, yeah, that's what I meant. Like the demo part of the song for Shake the Joint, Zeus was involved. Dynamite, which is Dave Gadimi, he was the DJ on that right. originally. So. That was taken, I took that over to uh, Debonair, and he, um, he, uh, he liked it, and so he wanted to put it, you know, he put it out, and uh, before that I had showed him a freestyle song, so came really close to uh, doing freestyle, but I had, a, I had done hip hop longer than anything, I mean, that's what I do, I battle people, I was, you know, I was a lyricist, I would write classic, you know, at school, you know, you're battling people in the hallways, all that, you know, and uh, doing rap contests, the whole nine, but, you know, I like freestyle too, I think everybody liked freestyle at the time, so I took my chance at that, you know, I, I think I had an okay voice, um, shop that around to Steve, Stevie B too, shop that too, and I don't, it didn't work out at the time, uh, he was busy with his career, so, I just said, you know what, I'm going to continue doing what I like, which is or what I feel is closest to my heart, which was hip hop. So that's how I, it led to uh, just going to the studio and, and demoing Shake the Joint. I came up with this idea, you know, it had to be fast tempo because I didn't think we were going to get played on the radio unless it was like 125 BPM uh, type of song. So it would, if you slow it down, it's your classic hip hop song. If you look at it, if it's like 98 BPM, then that's what it is. It's your, you got verses and you got, you got this sample of a R&B song or whatever song you want to put in there that's known, and um, it's the classic uh, rudiments of hip hop, but sped up with a lot of bass, so uh, it can be, um, you know, heard on local radio, which is what they wanted at the time. So, I'm Breezy Beat MC. This is the base that ate Miami. It's a cut it up death entertainment production. Hey, listen up to me one time. I'm sure you'll agree to what this rhyme says, dates, what it means, the effect that it makes on the hip hop scene. Breezy Beat MC, that is me. Ranked number one in poetry. Known to have great lyric potential. Live in Miami, which is essential to be different at this thing. You'll find it interesting. Now I'm close. Just prove my points. I'll step to the side. Let me shake the joy. I just bought a new car, like a little red car, right? And first of all, I had no idea, I mean, no disrespect, Nick, I mean, you were a big dude, so I'm like, I'm gonna have to have Nick in my car. We're gonna take my car up to Orlando, and Nick weighs like, I don't know how many, he was a big dude. And I'm sitting him next to me, and it was all right, it's all good. But I'm like, I'm a kid, so I don't know. Did he have his sweat towel with him? everything with him, right? It was like, you know. Ride in the center lane always. And that was his like, what do you mean? Like, I mean, I want to drive, I want to drive. No, you stay in the center lane. And he's like, he's like dad or something. He's like a dad type, you know? Yeah. And uh, so we get to the gig, we do the gig. I don't know what's happening. He's handling all the behind the scenes. But next thing we know, we're out in the parking lot and there's an angry mob approaching us. Hundreds of people. Why, why, why? I have no idea why. They were mad at us. I mean, I'm performing. What am I doing? What did I do to, to, I guess, piss anybody off? You know, I didn't. I don't remember. You know, I was just doing my thing, but it, it, something happened. It must have been a thing about money or something. You know, at the end, that's what it all. It's about, you know, like money. Anyway, all of a sudden, we're surrounded, and, and we're like in this tiny circle. It's me, nasty. And I believe it's it's Nick's daughter because she she brought Caroline everywhere. I think she wow. was there too. Good. It was pretty scary, man. And uh, all of a sudden, this like mob comes like circling us and hundreds of people. And Nick just stands up and he I guess I mean grabs his gun, you know. <laughs> and he's like, and well, he, he always grabs tells his people, hand, hey, and he, that's the gun he always tells people. You don't do what I say, I'm gonna pistol whip that motherfucker! That's what he always says, I'm gonna pistol whip! Go ahead. I mean, the gun was like this big. I mean, oh my god, yeah, that's a good one. I mean, how big, how big? I mean, it was that big, it was very small. Like you know, a 22. Dude, and you know, he's a big you guy, so it looked like... You got a mob of people coming at you, you know. You're gonna have to hope that somebody doesn't want to get hurt, you know, really is what, uh, I guess what it ended up as, you know, defending your life. But anyways, it didn't get to that point. And here's what happened. 
he comes up from the front of my car and he goes, bam, and he bangs on the front hood of my car and he leaves this big old hole because it was like a, a Chevy Sprint or something weird back in, you know, one of those, I had like a small, ridiculous car. I couldn't even believe I bought it myself, but it was great. I had it, it worked for what it was. He slammed on the hood, left a dent, and he said, you better back up. And he had like his gun, and everybody was like, like, just looked like a bunch of zombies just in their in their place, like wanting to get to you, but they couldn't almost. And uh, and then we got in our car and we drove away, man. And I gotta tell you, man, that was one of the most um, impressionable moments in my life. There was quite a few, but but that one, I'll always remember that one. And I gotta tell you, I'll always uh, I'll always respect Nick for that because he was a stand-up guy. And he protected his own, he protected his fans. You know, we had some differences, and we you know we we stopped working with each other after a while. But uh, that was, uh, that, that's bit. interesting you bring that up. I'm glad you bring that up because that was something to be said. I mean, you know, business is business and right. don't try to hurt my family because I'm not going to put up with it. And that's just the way it is, you know? Yeah, that's the way it is. I guess anyway. that's how we roll. You know? Nobody got hurt. Nobody got hurt. You know See? And uh, we're going to keep making music, so keep enjoying. God bless. Keep buying it. Keep buying it. <laughs> but try to buy it. Yeah. Cool. Great hanging out with these guys, man.